Hi everyone and welcome to Learn A-Level Biology for free with Miss Estrick. In this video I'm going to go through neurons and resting potential. So first of all the myelinated motor neuron, you need to know the structure of it to be able to recognise the features, label them but also what the parts do. So the cell body which we have here, this is where all the organelles that you typically find in an animal cell are. So for example the nucleus, mitochondria, the ribosomes, and that's so that proteins and neurotransmitter chemicals can be made. The dendrites, which you can see here branching out of the cell body, those are there to carry action potentials to surrounding cells. The axon is this long conductive fiber running all the way through the cell, and it carries the nerve impulse, and it's a site of multiple action potentials. And then lastly, we've got the myelin sheath or the Schwann cells that wrap around the axon. Now, the Schwann cell is made up of lots and lots of layers of myelin sheath, and that is a type of lipid. And because it's a lipid, it acts as an insulator. So it means that charged ions can't pass through at that point. There are gaps, though, which we can see here, and we call those gaps the nodes of Rambier, and that is where the action potentials can be generated. Now, action potentials is something that we're going to be doing in a later video. Today, we're just focusing on the resting potential. So we've looked at the motor neuron structure, and when that motor neuron is not conducting an impulse or an action potential, there is still a difference in the electrical charge between the inside and the outside of the neuron. And we call that the resting potential. The reason that we use the word potential is it's to do with the measurement, the voltage, and voltage is the potential difference. So we're looking at the potential difference between the inside and the outside of the neuron. So the resting potential is minus 70 millivolts. The reason for that is comparatively, there are more positive ions on the outside of the cell compared to the inside. And we can see that here. This graph is actually showing the generation of an action potential, which is coming up in a later video. But we can see that this section here, the stimulus isn't there until about 1.2 milliseconds. So at that point, we are at minus 70 millivolts, our resting potential, because there is no stimulus. So how that minus 70 is maintained then is all to do with these carrier proteins inside of the membrane in the axon. So the main protein which is maintaining this minus 70 millivolts is the sodium potassium pump. So this is an example of co-transport, also an example of the importance of ions and active transport because it's actively transporting ions either side of the membrane. So the way this pump works is it's able to actively transport three sodium ions out of the axon and two potassium ions into the axon. Now that is going to create an electrochemical gradient and by that we mean we have a buildup of sodium ions on the outside and we have excess potassium ions on the inside of the axon. Now within the membrane of the axon, there are also sodium ion channels and potassium ion channels. So now we have an electrochemical gradient on those two sides, facilitated diffusion is able to occur. So that results in the potassium ions moving from the inside where there's a high concentration to the outside where there's a lower concentration. And the opposite for the sodium ions, so they move from the outside of the axon where there's a high concentration to the inside of the axon where there's a lower concentration. Now the reason it doesn't balance out, meaning you don't have an equal number of sodium ions inside and potassium ions outside, is because this cell membrane is more permeable to potassium ions. Two different reasons for that. Number one, which you can't see in this diagram, is there's far more potassium ion protein channels than there are sodium ion channels. And if there's more channels, more potassium ions can diffuse out. Also, some of the time these channels are closed 
but the potassium ion channels are mainly open, whereas some of the sodium ion channels only open when you reach a high enough voltage. So that is how we maintain minus 70 millivolts, and that is the resting potential, which will be the voltage of the axon when there is no stimulus in your neuron. So that's it. If you want to have a go at some questions, head over to MissEstrick.com. I hope you found this helpful. If you have, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to make sure you don't miss the next video, click the subscribe button.